Welcome to Concordia Theological Seminary and to our lectionary podcast. We are now at proper 16, which is Luke 13, verses 22 through 30. And it's the uh, exhortation to enter through the narrow door. And this also fits in well with the Gospel of Luke as a whole. The Gospel of Luke is all about discipleship, about taking up our cross every day and following Jesus. And he wants us to know that it's not necessarily going to be easy. And uh, so we're set up, setting up the story in a kind of a basic way here. That he was... Um, making his way, going through uh, the towns and the, the villages as he was making his journey into Jerusalem. So there's a lot of movement here. And this is, we know Jesus is setting his face towards the cross, towards Jerusalem. He's doing this deliberately. He gets up in the morning and he knows what he has to do. That's, he sets his face towards Jerusalem and towards the cross and he teaches along the way. And so we have that today, that um, there's a certain someone, we don't know who that is, who says to him, Lord, well, that's a good question. It's a good way, at least it's a good address, way to, good way to address Jesus as Lord. Lord, is it true that oligoi, oligarchy, a few, will be Sozomenoi. Is it true that a few will be saved? We suppose we like to think that everyone will. We know our churches are not as full as we would like them to be. Is it true that only a few will be saved? So I don't know if he answers the question right away, but he gives a word of exhortation, a word of encouragement. He says, Agon needs us there. Struggle. Um, this, is the, this is the kind of word that you're going to get, I suppose, if you were an Olympian training, if you're a runner training to run across, in cross country, if you're in track running and training to run the mile, that you've got to listen to your trainer and you've got to struggle and you've got to work. There's a certain amount of discipline in this struggle to a cell thing to enter in through the narrow door. Why is that? Because many, I'm telling you, now we do know our Lord did die for many. He, our Lord uh, laid down his life for the polone, for the masses, for the multitude. Uh, here, many, many, I say, will seek. They will seek to enter into, but they will not. Iskusasun. They will not be strong enough. They will not be able. Now, I do think um, we might say that Jesus alone is the strong man, that Jesus alone can break open the gates, I think. But this is also a word simply of exhortation to us, that this word of agon, um, uh, we should take also practically. Um, and I, I tell my students this, I think about, sending my kids off to college, there are two things I can say to them. I can say, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust in Him always. And in that way, you shall be saved. Or I can also say, in a very practical way, go to church. Go to church. Get up in the morning. Get up on Sunday morning and go to church, and you will be saved, because that's the kind of spiritual discipline that will actually result in you hearing the word of God and being exhorted to the way of Christ and being encouraged and being comforted, that's part of the agon. I think other kinds of disciplines um, are helpful. To say the Lord's Prayer every day, to pray before the meal, come Lord Jesus, or to say Luther's morning prayer. These are good disciplines to agon, to enter into the narrow door. So we might very well say, for instance, that we're not saved by works. It's true. We're saved alone by what Christ has done for us 
On the other hand, the Christian life is full of works and it's full of disciplines by which we are in fact strengthened. And I suppose when it comes to the end of the day, the end of our life, then Christ will, will look back on our lives and it will see that it was Christ who was working in us all of the time. It was really all Christ. Now, um, he talks about this. Many will try to enter in, but, but will not be able. Now, he says, what, what, he, what we don't want to happen, he says, when the master of the house has risen and has shut the door, verse 25, and you'll begin to knock on that door. And um, it, it's really kind of a, it shows you how sad it is. It reminds us, I suppose, of the, of the rich man and Lazarus, where the rich man, he's in hell, and he wishes that in some ways he could warn his brothers, uh, but it's too late. And you'll begin to, you'll be outside, and you'll begin to knock, and you'll cry at the door, saying, Lord, open it to us, which is, it's, it's almost too awful to think of. And, um, you know, what's the response of our Lord going to be? And he will say, um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I mean, I don't know you here. I don't know where you came from. And uh, this is the person who's not been baptized. This is a person or who has rejected his baptism, who's rejected Christ, who gave up on the struggle. It's absolutely sad and pathetic. Well, what will the answer be? I mean, you can think about this. This, is, this really has to do, I think, with Christians. Um, people who knew about Christ, perhaps, but never really knew him. And people who fell away. And you will begin to say... But we ephagomon, and we ate with you, and we drank with you. Now again, this is a theme that runs throughout Luke. Remember, Jesus eats and drinks with tax collectors and sinners. It wasn't that long ago that we looked at uh, Simon the Pharisee who, who ate with Jesus, and we don't know whether he understood exactly what Jesus had come to do. Uh, so these are people, evidently, who had been the presence of Jesus during his ministry. Uh, these are perhaps people who even went to church. We ate with you and we drank with you. And in the, in the highways and the byways, you taught us. So these are, these are people who, who knew Jesus but didn't truly knew, know him. And the answer again is sad, I suppose, and he will say, again, I don't know where you're from. I don't know what this is all about. So again, this maybe, this is the truth, I guess we know from Matthew chapter 13 that when the Lord sows his seeds, when preachers preach the gospel and wheat comes up, there also comes up weeds. And there are people in the church who are not necessarily of the church. There are people who are in the church uh, who fall away. And these, he says, he calls them all ergetai adik, adik ias, workers. You are workers of iniquity. Therefore, depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. And this is another Lucan picture of, I suppose, hell and Maybe Luke doesn't talk about hell quite as much as Matthew, but it's, uh, it's got a pathetic kind of quality about it. And it really is a reminder to all of us who are Christians to hold on to what we have, that we have a precious gift in the gospel, that a church is a special home to, to cherish, and faith must be loved, must be nurtured. It needs to be nurtured among us. It must be nurtured among our children because it's just too great of a thing to lose. It would be really sad to, and I think about America, we're really in that kind of a place right now where the gospel is among us. The churches are still open, but how many churches now are in this phase that it looks like they're basically on life support? And you kind of wonder what happened. 
Pray that it would not happen among us. Pray thy kingdom come that the word would continue to be preached among us because this is not, it's, it's a terrible thing to think about that, um, that we might fall away. Because in verse 28 it says there's going to be weeping for, you know, those who rejoice will now weep and there'll be gnashing of teeth and what will happen is talking about pathetic. Um, just like the rich man could see Lazarus, it says, you will see when, when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets, wow, that's where I want to be, in the kingdom of God. But you. Now here he's first talking about the Jewish people, the Israelites, who should have uh, received their Savior. Um, but he could also be talking to us. Those who are died in the wool Lutherans, who are brought up as Lutherans, who were baptized as Lutherans, who ate and drank with our Lord at the table in the Lord's Supper, and yet we drifted away because we didn't struggle. We, instead of living the Christian life, we just became kind of lazy and we lost our faith and all we have are these kind of distant memories of the church. And we know what it's like um, when we meet people like this, people who were part of the faith, who were part of the confirmation class, and they go, oh yeah, the church is a nice place, but really their heart is now far from Christ. Let it not be so among us that we might be ekbalim on us, thrown out on the outside. And it will happen, and if, if we should not struggle to enter in through the narrow door, then others, of course, will. And I hope that it produces a godly jealousy when we see that people are coming to the faith from all sorts of places. Uh, they're going to come from, now we're used to in Matthew, they come from east and west. They come from the Magi, uh, come from the, the east, the centurion from the west, but also from the north and the south. And that's the place where it's happening today. Uh, we see Christianity growing leaps and bounds in the south, in South America and in Africa where Christianity is uh, just taking off and by the thousands they are being baptized and by the thousands and by the millions they will anaklithesontai, they will recline. That's the language of communion, that's the language of the Lord's Supper, of the feast that has no end and they will uh, recline in the kingdom of God. And again, this is the way Luke works. This is the way life works. There are, behold, um, uh, there are those who are last, and they will be first, the people you would never have guessed, and those who are first. And this means everything. This means people who were born uh, into the faith, born into the church, uh, were baptized when they were young, they fall away. Um, this could be people who are blessed and materially in every way. But there are many who are last, who will be first, and many who really should have been at the head of the table, but they just gave it up. And they will be last. And um, God, again, pray that it not happen among us, that he would keep us safe, and that he would also make us diligent, diligent in a life of prayer, Diligent in going to church every week, knowing that's where our, our nourishment and our sustenance comes. I think also um, as a word to parents, to be diligent in taking your children to church, that uh, we'll be responsible for them. And that means, you know, church means more than soccer and sports. It means more than sleeping in because uh, we didn't get up and exercise our faith and therefore have Christ, uh, our trainer, strengthen us for the days ahead. So, God, keep us today, we pray, strong in the faith that we might indeed enter in through the narrow door. Thank you again. Concordia Theological Seminary.